gonna say earlier, I didn't want you guys to make fun of me, but I always wanted a cool name like Corbin. Thank you. That was I brought, always wanted to be in a rock band, so I feel like we're kind of even. <laughs> I should name myself. I should have been called Cor. Like it's a good '80s name. Yeah. Like oh. Cody. Okay. Or Brody, like from Point Brody. Right. I still feel like you got on on the best end of this deal. I mean, you're in a successful rock band, yeah, right? So. Okay. All right. Well, Everybody, okay. welcome Skillet. Give him a big round. <laughs> This is John, who we were just talking to, lead singer of the band. Uh, to his left is Seth. And uh, one of the things that I found out about Seth that I think is pretty awesome is you almost missed the opportunity to be in this band uh, by chucking the manager's uh, call to voicemail. Is that oh, accurate? Oh, yeah. Scotty. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you almost completely missed the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and it, you quickly called I back. I called back two times. <laughs> two times. So the first time you didn't get, were you nervous? No, like, I don't know. Oh, I hope he okay. <laughs> right, they're like bill collector. Yeah. Totally. Uh, that worked out. And Seth has a good pedigree of, of music too, Audio Drillin, Reliant K, and a bunch of others. So uh, great addition to the band. And like I said, John, to his right is Jen. Jen is the drummer. <laughs> Jen, 18? Yeah, I was When 18. you started playing with the band? Yeah, it was a couple of weeks after my 18th birthday when I had my first show with Skillet. What kind of baptism by fire is that? <laughs> it was terrifying. Almost literal. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell them. Right. Well, it was also the first time they ever used pyro. And <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever played in front of a crowd bigger than like 200 people. And it was, you know, an Her arena. first show with the 7,000 people was an <laughs> arena tour. Uh, it was a package tour. And, uh, so and I needed to say that. No, no, no. I, my, it's I, all about me. I got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Baptism by fire is a little too literal because... My hair actually did set on fire in one of those first oh, shows. No, Only no. a touch. A tiny a piece. touch. A but you know that smell of burning hair? Oh, yeah. And you know the feeling of a singeing ash upon your head? <laughs> that happened during a show when I was 18, and I didn't cry, and I kept playing. So literally trial by fire. Yeah, literally. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. And I refuse to admit that I believed it to, to her. You know like you do with a kid when you're like, it's not bleeding, it's not bleeding, you know, like that, but you you're know okay. it is. Right. No, you're it's trying to convince bad. them. Right. So it was about probably three years in, I was like, yeah, it did catch fire. Right? It's like, no, it didn't, it's fine. And then the true, I mean, John's the lead singer of the band, but the true lead person in the band is Corey I don't know down on the end that's John's <laughs> wife and so uh, husband and wife in a band that's just not something that people expect to happen how how did it go from meeting uh, through church and stuff and then here we are in a band 30 years later by the way which 20 Oh, okay. How old do you think I'm not we are? Like 96? 96? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I went to school in Iowa. You, you, you're not, not so good at the arithmetic no, there. No, I was trying to give you more pedigree. Right? So 20, after 20 years later, it's, is it hard to look back at that and go, wow, that was just a thing, and then it turned into this? That's exactly how it feels. It's kind of crazy, you know, like kids in a van, and then here we are with our own kids in a bus, and we're still doing it 20 years later. Like, no, oh, another record and another touring cycle and hey my kids might be in college the next time we put on another record you know? <laughs> depends on where they go right yeah right, right. <laughs> uh all right so we got little ditty about jack and die <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is that would be awesome if we started with that so i i kidding. need to learn this crap on acoustic it's what you asked me and i'm an idiot john and i were talking beforehand he's not a fan of the acoustic guitar so he he's literally doing this for the fans yeah uh doing this uh, where he can play for you guys so that's pretty admirable because a lot of uh rock bands won't even take the time to do this this far into their career, much less play an instrument they don't want to play. So it's, it's pretty awesome that they all yeah. stepped up to do awesome. this. What's the first song we're going to hear from you guys today? We're going to play Monster because a lot of people know that one. Sure. And, uh, you know. What is, it, what is it about this song for you guys? What's the meaning behind it? There's a, Obviously, there's a lot of websites out there that give their two cents. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, anybody that's a fan of the band knows um, the place where you guys come from and how important that is in your life. But what does this song mean to you? then when you guys wrote it into now okay let me think here sometimes some of our our, our biggest songs have been uh songs that when i kind of got the idea it started as a little bit of a joke uh, i mean not like ah! but you know like lighthearted. that's more what i mean uh i got the idea for monster when i was watching the hulk so see how dumb that is it's awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah okay i thought maybe my respect level just no way <laughs> that's oh fun. Yeah, I, because I never really liked the Hulk. I love comic books, and um, I'm a huge Marvel fan, but I never really liked the Hulk. And when I went to go see, uh, I, somebody convinced me, oh, 
my brother-in-law convinced me to see the first Hulk movie. You remember the one with uh, Nick Nolte? And yes. It, it was not good. It wasn't wonderful. <laughs> no. And so I was like, I'm never doing that again. He's like, and then this next one came with Edward Norton. He's like, you got to see it. And I was like, no. He dragged me to it, and it was awesome. Yeah. I thought that was a fantastic movie. And in the movie, uh, when when the, the 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 baddie, you know, he gets those injections and he's looking all crazy. I was like, man, are you all right? How do you feel? And he's like, I feel like a monster. And I thought, we should write a song about that. How long did it take to write the song? I, seen that. Yeah, well, probably a couple days. A couple days. And uh, I thought it was kind of a cool concept because all of us can relate to having something in us that we wish was, you know, like it comes out like when you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, is, is this child that I love ever going to sleep are they really going to ruin my life and for how long you know <laughs> uh, and it's really hard and then you're driving on the street and somebody cuts you off and then you're like that's it and um, that's the monster and that guy needs to die he needs to, he needs to go away you know so that's kind of what the song was about ladies and gentlemen skillet and monster Woo!